This review today was something of a stretch. It was. I'm going to say that right up front. It's a review of the Gato PWR222 monoblock class AB amplifier. That's what it is. It's a very high powered amp, 250 watts into 8 ohms, 450 into 4, and the first 15 watts are class A watts. But anyway, it's a powerful amp. And the thing is, here's, what I'm, here's my confusion, is that I don't really do reviews of high power amplifiers very often. I mean, I do, but it's not really my thing because most of the speakers that I enjoy tend to be high sensitivity speakers like Klipsch's or Zoo or the Pure Audio Project. They don't need a lot of power. They sound great with 10 watts or 20 watts or sometimes even two. So why would I review an amplifier that's this powerful? And the answer is, well, because of the way it sounds. Beyond its power output, it's allures stretched beyond power to just the beauty of the sound itself. That's why I said yes. Well, actually, wait, there's also another part of this, is that on my schedule of things to do, of reviews to do, was the TAD CE1TX that I posted a review not long ago, that's a very low sensitivity speaker. It needs a lot of power to jump. So I thought, well, yeah, that was the other thing that pushed me to say yes for the 222. And another review, which I'm working on now, which we'll post in about a week, another very low sensitivity speaker, the Eminent Technology LFT8B, which is a planar magnetic design. I'm really excited about that review. So all those things together, and just, I guess, the end, curiosity, I'm like, yeah, I wonder what this can do, because I reviewed the Gato Amp 150 integrated amp about two years ago and really loved it. I have very strong memories of that, that, yeah, okay, so I'll do the 222 review. And I am so glad I did. So the green, I gave him the green light. We're moving forward with this review. But the speakers that I had set up the day that I unpacked them were the Pure Audio Project Duet 15s. Again, very high sensitivity speaker. I thought, well, why not? Let's just do it. I hooked it up, and you know what? It sounded really good. It was making the Duet 15s do things they didn't normally do in terms of jump factor, aliveness, airiness, just spatial details and things were just so much clearer with this amp, with the 222, than the amps I normally use. So it's like, yeah. So even with a high sensitivity speaker, this amp actually does make sense. Now I love, love, love the look of this amplifier. It's not <laughs> a rectangular metal box. I've seen a lot of those over the years. This is all about the curves. Oh yeah, the curves, the curves are beautiful. Those rounded heat sinks on both sides of the chassis, just stunning. Now up front, there's a round meter that's either a VU meter, give you some idea of how much power you're putting out, and also a temperature gauge, because this puppy can run hot when you're playing it really loud, and you can see how hot you're getting there. <laughs> so anyway, that's all part of it. Now the top cover, everybody loves meters, right? Uh, the top cover is wood, and it can either be painted uh, black or white or the paint color of your choice, like automotive paints, that's all available. And also, if you go the other way, and you just want a wood cover because it's a softer, mellower look, you can get it in walnut or other wood finishes, all available on request. So that is really, really nice. Now, but let's take the cover off and look inside the amplifier. And as you're looking that over, you might think, something is missing, because <laughs> it is. Usually high-powered amplifiers have a row or two rows of power transistors, of output transistors. And this one, the 222, has just two. Two very large, unusually large MOSFET power transistors. Two, because one is for the positive wave, one is for the negative wave. And Gatto claims that this creates their sound, which is clearer, more transparent than most of the competition. Because most of the competitions, all those rows of transistors, even though they might be matched, they're never going to be exactly the same, right? All those 10 or 12 transistors are, all have slight differences between them, and those differences create, well, let's say a blurring or a softening of the signal. 
it's it's the high end stuff you know that we care about that's the subtle details that are possibly lost when those uh, transistors out, those output transistors aren't 100% identical but on the 222 they kind of are because it's just one for each way anyway that's the story I'll link to the detail the details of that description on the Gato website Hey, let's take a look at the specifications, and while you're doing that, I'll tell you about the pricing. Now, Gato is a Danish company. Uh, they sell worldwide direct. They have no distributors, and the shipping is free. So they've cut out all the associated costs of distributors and dealers, and the shipping is free, and there is a 30-day home trial period. Now, the price of the PWR222 is four thousand three hundred and ninety five euros each for the US customers that converts to today at least four thousand seven hundred and twenty six dollars each also worth noting that uh, if you need to return the amplifier you're not going to send it back to Denmark it goes to a US site and that site can also handle repairs warranty repairs in the US the warranty runs to five years I want to start to tell you about my listening sessions with the 222 match with the TAD CE1 TX and the music was this album this very special album by King Sunny a day it was recorded in 1987 now here's where it gets interesting it was recorded live to two tracks which is huge ensemble. There might have been 20 people on stage, lots of percussion, electric guitars, bass, drums, all this stuff's going on, live to two track. And the microphone that's listed in the notes here, the technical notes for this album, was a sound field mic, meaning one stereo microphone. That's what it says. So that might have been the only microphone used. I don't know. But anyway, it's live to two track. The energy coming out of the speakers was amazing. Because it's it's very ambient sounding. They just spread out. The sound escapes. That's the word. The sound escapes from the speaker. And all of the details of the dynamics of all these players, the percussionists, the drums, the guitars, the vocals, is extraordinary. And the 222 and the CE1TX were letting it through. It, in other words, it didn't seem to be holding anything back. And yes, I played it loud because I had that power and I wanted to just sample it for a little bit, for a few minutes at a time, I was playing it in the high 90 dB range just to feel all that energy. So yeah. And by the way, if you're nervous about my neighbors, and I do this at 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, they're probably not even home. And if they are and it bugs them, they tell me so. And this almost never happens that my neighbors are upset by my music playing. For you people that worry about that. So anyway, I said, yeah. I'm starting to feel it. <laughs> I'm starting to feel that maybe I do like power. I like, anyway, I'm kidding around. But anyway, this combination really set the standard. Up to this point, and through a lot of the listening sessions, I was using the linear tube audio preamplifier, but that doesn't have a balanced output. So I decided to switch over to the Pass Labs XP30 and run the Mola Mola Tembaki DAC, which has a balanced output and hear it in a more balanced configuration, put it that way. And the sound was, in fact, yes, more neutral. We just felt there was no added warmth, but it certainly wasn't cool. It was pretty much straight down the middle. Again, the dynamics, that life, that those spaces between the instruments, really, really impressive with the 222 TAD CE1TX combination. You could just hear into the recordings. I'm playing some chess, at this point I was playing some chess keys, just popping them in and out of the CD player, the Jay's Audio CD2, CD Transport, and just going through them and just listening into the music, and that was really extraordinary. So at this point I wanted to compare the 222 to the NAD M23 Class D amplifier. It's a high-powered amp, 200 watts channel into 8, 380 into 4. And I was listening to this Peter Erskine record on uh, MA recording. In other words, another live to two track recording, no dynamic range compression, no EQ, just being there. And I actually was present at this session because it was done in New York City. And it just came, another one, it just came out of the speakers. And I could almost, you know, sort of see the sound, but all the shading and dynamics that Peter was doing on the drums was just 
like it's right there. It's right there coming out of the TAD speakers with the 222. Now, when I switched over to the M23, the tonal balance changed to be warmer, fuller, rounder, but not as uh, 3D, not as, dimen not as dimensional. It just kind of flattened out a bit, not 100%. But returning back to the 222, that just sound that I could hear around the instruments, that kind of sound staging was absolutely extraordinary because it's in the recording. It's just getting to hear it. That's the tricky part. And it takes good stuff to get there. As I was doing these comparisons, I also want to do the same thing, but switch over to the Pure Audio Project Duet 15s, these open baffle speakers, which always have a bigger soundstage than a box speaker does. Bigger, deeper, wider, higher. Everything got bigger. The Pure Audio Projects can sound a bit soft, as I've heard them mostly, but here with the 222, they just lit up more. It was more life, more that tactile quality coming out with the 222 driving the Pure Audio Project and returning to the NAD M23, that was taken down a few notches. Now I have to point out that the NAD is a lot less expensive. It's like mm, less than half the price of the 222. The next comparison was one I thought, does this make any sense? Well, I did it anyway. I compared the 222 with the Deckware Sara 300B amplifier, which is seven watts a channel, but these are very high sensitivity speakers. And I'm playing this Elton John album, which I think of as his first, but it's not really his first album. But anyway, a great, great music, but not a great recording or great mix. The piano is boxy sounding, the strings are too bright. It's just kind of a closed in, not a terribly enjoyable mix, Music is great. So anyway, I'm playing it over the 222 and say, yeah, that's the way this record sounds. It's not, it's not the amplifier's fault, but that's what's going down. But then I switched over to the Sarah 300B amplifier, played it at the same level. Everything got better. The piano was less annoying. The strings were certainly less bright. It was just more musical sounding with the Sarah amplifier. It just was. So sometimes it's one of those too much information that the, that the, it's not that the 222 was doing anything wrong. It was just telling me the truth about the recording and the deckware, which isn't a particularly soft sounding amplifier, uh, was just making it go down a lot easier and just made the whole experience a lot more enjoyable with tubes in the system. So at this point, I swapped out the Pure Audio Project speakers for the Eminent Technology LFT-8Bs. Now this is a panel speaker, a planar magnetic speaker with a ribbon tweeter and an eight inch sealed woofer. And I played this recording by Bob Belden and it was amazing. Now I was present at this session. This is a Chesky album. It's a tribute to uh, Miles Davis kind of thing. And first of all, it, the session itself was goosebump territory in a silent way. And I like there, oh, it was incredible. And just the drums on this recording were so, uh, you, you could touch them. It was one of those, you can touch them. And the sense of space, this was recorded in a church in Brooklyn. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal recording. And I was getting so much air and clarity and that sense of being in the room with the band, with the 222. And when I switched over to the pass, a lot of that airiness, that clarity was gone. Now remember, this has nothing to do with being bright. Bright is more like at two or three or four K. That's where bright lives. When you're talking about really high frequencies over 10 K, that's a different story. And that's what was going on here is I could just hear more of that airiness, that spaciousness coming out of the eminent technology speakers with the 222. And it's control over that eight inch woofer the shit, there's an acoustic bass on the record, the shading of the bass, the, you know, it was a large wooden instrument. You just had more of that clarity down there with the 222 than the Pass X825. Anyway, I'm really excited about doing the review of the Eminent Technology. It's coming up in about a week from now. Well, let's do this thing called, so Steve, what do you really think of the Gato PWR222 monoblock amplifier? Well, 
it had me reconsidering my stance vis-a-vis -vis high powered amplifiers because I as I said earlier I shy away from them because I don't you know I don't really need it because I'm using high sensitivity speakers but even when I played this one with the pure audio projects I was knocked out it transformed the sound of that speaker for the better I just love that combination so that that wasn't what I was expecting and when I used it with the low sensitivity speakers the eminent technology and the TAD yeah Again, it's the clarity, that precision of this amplifier, the neutrality of this amplifier are extraordinary. And I also just love the way it looks. The curves, the wood, the heat sinks. It's an amazing package. It's not very big, by the way. So it doesn't take up a lot of space, except that there's two of them. Which reminds me, you know, it is an expensive amplifier, nearly $10,000 for the pair. But here's the good news. The, the Gato uh, Amp 150 that I reviewed a few years ago, it's the same size, same shape, and it is half the price. So if you can't quite swing for the, uh, for the 222s, you might, you might be interested in checking out the Amp 150. So en enough said. That's, that's what I'm saying here. So yeah, I think the 222 is extraordinary, and I'm so glad I agreed to do this review. And speaking of glad, yeah, now it's time for, you know it, you love it, the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. Rich sent in this picture of his system, which features two, not one, but two vintage Yamaha components, a CT-A10 tuner and a CA-A10 integrated amplifier. Music streaming is handled through a Blue Sound node, and vinyl on a musical 9.3 turntable with a Goldring Erica LX low output moving coil cartridge. The phono preamp is a Vincent 701 with a Telefunken tube. The speakers are Kef R3 Metas and they are sitting upon handmade mahogany stands by Audio Chic in England. The subwoofer duties are handled by an SVS Micro 3000. Rich is expecting two new additions. His first tube amplifier, a Wilsonton 800i 805, and an EverSolo DMP A6 Master Edition music server to possibly replace the Blue Sound Note. We'll see how that audition goes. Thank you, Rich. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and it's true, I am the Audiophiliac. There are imposter, I know it's crazy, but there are imposter Steve Guttenbergs who are scamming manufacturers and scamming my viewers. I don't ask for money from you guys, except when I'm pitching my Patreon, which I'm doing right now, and you can check it out. The address is on the screen right now to help support this channel. It's coming up on six years old and possibly even 250,000 subscribers by the end of this year. So anyway, if you want to help, help along, contribute, please check out that site for Patreon. And if you just like a video, please hit that like button. It means a lot to me. And also subscribe to the channel. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.